It's been just about a month since Chinese company Xiaomi made its grand entry into the Indian market by launching its flagship smartphone, the Mi 3. The company has been grabbing eyeballs right from the word go and has been making waves because of its flash sale model. All in all, it is one of the most talked about brands right now. And all of this, it is managed by a simple marketing strategy that's using social media and India's most popular e-commerce site, Flipkart. And mind you, not a penny on traditional media. The company has also made no bones about its desire of India becoming Xiaomi's second largest market after China. So what's the game plan and how will things pan out in India? Sara Kapoor spoke to a host of experts to find out just that. One, two, three, four, five. That's how long it took for Chinese handset manufacturer Xiaomi to sell 10,000 units of its Mi 3 handsets exclusively on Flipkart on the 29th of July 2014. And if you thought that was fast, TikTok was all it took for the phone maker to sell another 15,000 units on the 5th of August. Three more sales since then and all the results were more or less the same. All you see is the out of stock sign staring at you on your screen. Undoubtedly, Xiaomi's Mi 3 is the new kid on the block in the smartphone market. As we start entering uh, the India market a few weeks ago, um, we, you know, we, we have underestimated, clearly underestimated the demands for the India market. We look at a lot of the uh, internet matrix and trends and indexes very closely. Uh, for instance, uh, one index that we look at very closely is the, the Facebook, Facebook likes that we got uh, for each of the markets. Um, so before we actually launched the device in India, you know, we look at how many likes we got uh, for the Me India uh, Facebook accounts and, and we get about 10,000 likes, uh, which is a very small number compared to some other uh, countries' Facebook accounts that we have. For instance, like in Taiwan, we had 230,000 likes. In Hong Kong, we have 160,000 likes. So uh, when we are looking at some of these numbers, um, you know, we, we, we believe that the number uh, and the phones that we will make available for the few, few, for the few sales in the beginning uh, should be adequate. Uh, and clearly, you know, be, uh, uh, looking at what happened the last three weeks, we have substantially underestimated the, the demand uh, in India. They do this in every country, in Singapore, in Malaysia, in India. In India, they chose Flipkart as the suitable partner. And the way it worked really well was Flipkart was able to promote this especially well to pretty much all of its regular customers who were registered with Flipkart as customers. So via the banners on the website, via the emailers that they sent out and regular banner advertisements on the internet, they got the awareness built up to a pretty good degree that Xiaomi is launching and you can purchase it on Flipkart. But is this e-commerce frenzy for Xiaomi short-lived or does this Chinese manufacturer have the potential to be the game changer in the Indian smartphone market? In China, in a little less than four years, the company's results are truly phenomenal. According to research firm Canalys, Xiaomi captured 14% of the Chinese market in the second quarter of this year, surpassing Samsung and accounting for a whopping 15 million smartphones sold. Given that the Chinese smartphone market is the largest in the world, that number is enough to make Xiaomi the fifth largest smartphone maker behind Samsung, Apple, Huawei and Lenovo. And having conquered China, Xiaomi is setting its eyes on markets like India, which is poised to become the third largest consumer of smartphones across the globe by 2017. Xiaomi's focus is to make slow inroads in the country without massive investments. Hence, the plan is to keep Flipkart as its exclusive retailer and not set up brick and mortar outlets. This is also in line with Xiaomi's business philosophy, considering they themselves are an established e-commerce platform with me.com. Both uh, Flipkart and us, uh, we are both e-commerce company. Um, and yeah, apparently Flipkart is the, uh, one of the best and successful e-commerce company uh, in India. Um, and we share many things in common. And uh, um, uh, with the experience that uh, Flipkart has, um, we are able to, to work with them uh, and bring the products to India to, consumer mar uh, to consumers in here in India very fast. Um, and I think overall, uh, e-commerce is certainly the way to go. Um, so, so this is something that we have done in China, uh, also in other markets. Uh, we have also set up our own uh, Me.com operations as well as partnering with other e-commerce platforms.
So it actually makes sense to start from scratch and then see the kind of uh, traction that they can build in the Indian market. And this is an easy way to do it. If not, if they need to actually, if they, if they, if they need to actually have an offline network trying to actually sell the product, it's going to take time and a lot of effort plus also increase the cost of the product itself. So I think that's what they're trying to do. They actually want to test the waters in the most efficient manner possible. And I think Flipkart is probably the best platform for them to try so. What is also extremely interesting about Xiaomi's India plans is the fact that they have zero interest in traditional marketing and advertising. Hence, they follow a principle of no TVCs and will focus only on digital and social media marketing. So traditionally, we have never done any kind of paid marketing. or uh, So we don't do any TV ads, uh, we don't do any print ads, anything. So I don't think we will need any kind of media agency over here in India. Uh, on the creative part of it, yes, so we want to create a lot of innovative content which, uh, which will be consumed on different digital platforms. We won't be spending money to promote it, but we want to have it on a different social media platform like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. So for that, we may take help of some agency on the creative side of it, but for media buying, no. In fact, the reason they managed to create so much buzz in India for a virtually unknown brand in the country was through word of mouth on social media, through a host of digital evangelists and tech bloggers across the country. The whole point of the flagship phone launch in such a different manner was to create PR and sensation at no actual invested cost. That's the reason we're actually talking about this today to begin with. It didn't really cost them as much. The on-ground engagement with bloggers is something they do regardless to get more feedback about the phone. Users who have influence on the internet in, a f in swaying opinion, these people are going to help spell the message across better also. So far, Xiaomi has sold 75 units in India since it was launched on July 22nd. And according to experts, if the brand continues this level of sales, it could command a 5% market share in the 10 to 15,000 rupee price band by the end of this year. And that's with a complicated process of pre-registering on the company's website before actually being able to buy on Flipkart. And each time, there's been at least 1 to 2.5 lakh consumers registering on the site. But the question that arises here is as the company's production capacity increases and more and more consumers own a Mi 3, will it lose some of the exclusivity around it? So my assumption is they're not actually going to start producing lakhs and lakhs unit of MI3. What they're likely to do is keep it still reserved and tough to come by, thereby making it a premium product despite the low cost. That is another way of positioning it. And they make more products available across the range, bases your need. So you are likely to have say seven or eight uh, Xiaomi products available and all of them are relatively still tough to come by to make sure that they actually sell. The concept very simply comes to the idea of making something that sells out as soon as it's made, they were not requiring them to spend massive amounts of advertising, which ultimately trickle down to the user themselves. So this is going to prevent them from selling millions of units and becoming a market leader right away. But wherever and whatever they launch, they are sure to actually build a buzz around it and interest around it, which is a challenge with most of the leaders. One look at the phone and it's clear that Xiaomi wants to be the world's cheaper Apple be it in terms of design or the features that Xiaomi products offer. This similarity was even more blatant when Xiaomi CEO Lee Jun donned a black t-shirt and jeans when he announced the Mi 2, doing a Steve Jobs. The stark difference, however, is in terms of price. And that's the factor that might make the difference in India. Everyone knows India is an extremely price-sensitive market. But beyond this, they're also extremely discerning. So if they're spending big bucks on their phone, they want more features beyond just style. And as a result, Apple phones haven't seen much traction in the Indian market in comparison to other markets in the world. The plan ahead for Xiaomi will be to slowly bring in the rest of its portfolio into the Indian market. And the announcement of the Mi 4, Xiaomi's tablet and its low-end models last week was testament to that. What's clear is that Xiaomi seems to be playing all the right cards with its rollout plan in India. Very small spends and big hype. And if the company's phenomenal progress in China is anything to go by, then the Samsungs and Micromaxes in India better watch out.
Well, this is one company that seems to be truly disruptive and in tune with all the new rules of the game. Let's move on. WPP-owned research agency Millward Brown announced Brand Z or Brand Z, which is really the top 50 most valuable Indian brands. This is really a global study that uses a brand valuation mechanism that combines officially released financial data and consumer-driven brand equity measurement to calculate brand value. Here's a look at the top five brands. At number five, it's good old Hamara Bajaj. Coming in at number four is ICICI Bank. Banks clearly were the favorites on this particular index. As State Bank of India landed the number three spot, followed by telecom major Airtel, which claimed the second position. And Airtel was beaten out by yet another bank, HDFC, who hogged the limelight and took the numero uno spot on the Brand Z index.